Hey guys, it's Bailey. Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in to what is going to be a review of the Ofra Boho Pro Palette. Bought this from Ulta when they were doing their massive 20% off sales or like handing out those coupons if they were candy. At the end of last year, I put in one big purchase telling myself it would be my last for a long time and I'd had my eye on this for a while on the site. And quick little deviation, if you're here for the review, I will put a timestamp below, but I really wanna know if you've ever experienced this before before because I think it could be a, a video entirely on its own. But basically, have you ever seen a product on a website? For me, normally they're on sites like Ulta or Sephora where they're not brand owned. It's kind of like they might take outdated imagery or just unflattering imagery of a product that makes it look unappealing, dull, sometimes even just flat out ugly and make you not want to buy it. That's kind of what this palette was for me on Ulta. And I've tried Ofra products before. I've loved Ofra products before, specifically highlights, maybe an eyeshadow or a bronzer, but specifically highlights. Like I know the power of Ofra, and yet every single image I'd seen on this palette just made it look really unattractive. But I've been eyeing it for so long, I've been wanting to try some more products from Ofra. So I finally just bit the bullet, took the risk and ordered it. And boy, is it so much better than I ever expected it would be looking at those pictures. It just made me think like how many other products are out there that are amazing that I just overlook, push aside, push to the back of my priority list because it looks ugly and unappealing online. Let me know what you think, if you've ever felt that about a product, if you currently have those products where every time you scroll past, you're just like, no, thank you. Who would wanna buy that? But in reality it could be like your new favorite product because that's kind of what this is for me. I mean. It's not perfect. I'll talk about what I think it could use a little bit more of later on in the video, but just quick detour to talk about my buying experience with this because I feel like I'm not alone and there are certainly other products that this has probably happened with. Okay, now more about this palette. So unfortunately, as I look for the availability now on the app, I purchased this, what, maybe two weeks ago at this point, two and a half weeks ago at this point. And on Ulta, it's sold out. On the Ofra website, it's sold out. But one of the most important things I noticed in looking around is that the price varies widely. On Ulta, I bought this for $59, I believe, which I think is a good deal for everything you get inside. But on the Ofra website, it is $79. And that's the only place where right now you can plug in your email address and they'll notify you when it comes back in stock. So I would check other sites because there's definitely a price discrepancy. You should get it for the cheaper one, obviously, I think. But right now I'm not sure where exactly that place is. But moving on, what you get when you open up this palette is right here. And by the way, it comes in a cardboard palette with a magnetic closure and a pretty sizable mirror. And if you've ever had a Natasha Denona, or I'm sure a lot of other palettes have them, but this just reminds me of those, where the separator between all of these pans is a little bit cushy. And then you can see that there are little holes around the pans for you to easily get them out, depot them, not really depot them, depalette them, and put them in your own Z palette, freeform palette, whatever it is you have on hand. They make it really easy to do that, which I really love in case this is not your palette of choice. But I digress. So inside you get this general configuration, which I've seen across a couple of different pro palettes that Ofra offers. And the gist is basically that you get four face powders. This is a banana type setting powder, two blushy shades, one highlighter. Then you get two medium to deep brown tones, kind of cooler ash tones, which makes me think, they, thinks, think they're supposed to be brow powders. Then over here, you get two large face powders, one bronzer and one highlight. The highlight is a different tone than the smaller highlight that comes in the face quad up here, which I like. And then you get six different eyeshadows. Now, overall, this palette leans warm. I think that's just the theme of the being boho, but I would have loved to see the exchange for some cooler shades or even just some more variety because you can see up here in the shadows, we get a little close with the shimmer shades. We have a nice contrasting deep chocolate brown and a matte mustard. Both of these are matte actually, really beautiful matte formulas. And then the shimmery shades we have are kind of a light pinky copper, a deep pinky copper, a purple, and a cooler satin matte, but it's almost the same shade as this brow powder down here, just with a satin finish. And it's not intensely satin, so I feel like they function very similarly. They're not identical when worn on the lid, but they are pretty similar. So there are some color overlaps in here where if there were just one thing that I could change to make this the perfect palette for me, it would just be a little bit more contrast and variation in the shades offered here. Beyond that though, 
I really love the configuration of this palette, the multi-use qualities all of these products have, and I think it makes it a really versatile palette and one that you could take on the go or even just use every day for an extended period of time and really never see the same sort of look twice. And this was the gut reaction I had when I first opened this and started to use it, but I thought I'm going to actually try it for five days in a row. So I did. You can see all of those looks that I will hopefully either have already been flashing up here or start now flashing up here on the screen screen. I really tried my best to create different eye looks. There isn't a whole lot different you can do on the face and that of course will certainly vary by your skin tone. If you have a fairer skin tone you might find that you can't use these bronzer shades as bronzer unless you dilute it with something like this banana powder because not only are they pretty medium toned bronzers but they're also very pigmented bronzers so a little bit goes a long way. I personally find it's very easy to overdo it great for medium to deep skin tones, but if you have light to fairer skin tones, you might just find that you have to you either can't use them as bronzers, they're more eyeshadows for you, or you just have to dilute it with that, mix it and dilute it with that banana powder a little bit. Another thing I like specifically about these blush tones up here is this kind of pinky mauve one on the end is a good, what I would consider for my skin tone, a true blush. It's something that I really would only wear on the apples of my cheeks because it's not quite brown leaning enough to be a bronzer. However, the shade next to it has has those terracotta undertones so I feel like especially on my skin tone this is how I like to wear a shade like this as one that doubles as both a blush and bronzer and the way I do that is just applying it kind of higher up on the cheek back here and then really shearing it out towards the apples of my cheeks where I would normally wear blush but something about this shade on my skin tone it just does it all for me it's a combo bronzer blush and so i really like that they included it in here because i can go full on you know bronzer or even if you want to use some of these shades as bronzer and pair with the blush up here or i could just go straight for this multi-use shade and call it a day in general i think it is safe to say that this is a palette that i really like i think i'm going to get a lot of good out of and it's one that has made me want to try the other pro palettes like i said they have other palettes in this configuration but with different themes, so different shade selections, and I just have to think that I would get the same kind of versatility from those as I would with something like this. So I'm eager to try those. Let me know if you have tried them in the comments below. Honestly, one of the other things I thought when I first opened this was I wish this was the new Naked palette, uh, and a lot of people might not be with me on that, but when I, when I saw the new, they re revamped the original Naked palette, and when I saw the preview of it with there's like a peach tone and then lots of other neutral shades, I was just kind of like, nah, about it. And this feels a little bit closer to what a revamped version of that could be. Like what about a full face naked palette that includes the contour, the highlight, in addition to eyeshadows and things like that. I don't know, that was just like an idea that really struck me as something that I would love. And at this point, I feel like I'm rambling. Bottom line is I really like this palette. Yes, there's some caveats that if you aren't a warm tone person or you like a little bit more variety, this might not be for you. But overall, I am pleasantly surprised with my experience with this palette. And so I recommend you check it out if like me, you've been looking at it, kind of thinking, what even is that? Is it worth it? I would say give it a try because it surprised the heck out of me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.